We're heading into our second semifinal now. It's going to be Oskaka versus Tais. Tais is uh, the last of uh, the G2 team, but uh, they did get, you know, unfortunately matched up against each other in uh, in today's uh, in today's quarterfinals. So uh, only one person could go through, and uh, it is going to be up against Oskaka. Uh, pretty interesting. Uh, I think I think it's safe to say that the Warrior is the third wheel of this lineup, but overall, um, I think it is among the better lineups, even still out of the decks remaining in the tournament. Yeah, I definitely think so. Um, the remaining decks are, again, are taking a personality of their own, um, but with the Priests remaining, I'm definitely feeling those Kaka's lineup more. Uh, I think, again, JJ's liability was that his mid-range shaman lost a little bit more than it should have giving him less chances for mm -hmm. him to actually get an ideal setup going to game fours and five um just more chances for your druid to draw the right set of cards uh, is, is what you really want so now that he has rogue it's inevitably going to strike a win i think it'd be very surprising to see dragon decks be able to win so convincingly against the rogue deck um however we've seen weirder matchups happen uh or sorry outcomes happen with bad matchups so yeah. I'm, willing, I'm just ready to, to, to roll the punch grab. I'm ready to go. On the other side of that, we've seen that um, the G2 lineup does do very well against Shamans. Um, the Druid is just pretty good against Shaman in general. Uh, and the Priest and Warrior, I think, do have favorable matchups against that. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. yeah I, uh, that's fair. I think Tice is, is maybe a, a bit advantageous in the lineups because of that. I think I'd have to sway this Tice aside 1%. 1%. So you're saying 51 to 49. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to lean towards Oskaka. I'm going to say that I think he's got the edge. Uh, he's got the historical edge as well. Last time, he mm. denied Tice tens of thousands of dollars from uh, from being able to draw the Alex draws at the right time and and being able to um, win, win a very nice chess match. People uh, tout Oskaka versus Tice. It's one of the best series of 2015. And so we have another date, potentially with uh, a really great set of games. I I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what these guys have. Yeah. It's going to be a Druid from Tice and Rogue from Oskaka to open things up. Um, I kind of like this hand from Oskaka, but we've seen that he is uh, very aggressive in uh, getting that gadgets and combo going. So um, I wouldn't be surprised to see a number of these cards dropped. Mm. Yeah, the it, it, it's continuing to see like more evolution as time goes on as well, which is uh, definitely interesting with that. Um, to just also think about what Rogue really wants against the the Druid, <clears throat> you can argue three out of four cards are are there already. Um, and even with the advent of Living Roots populating the board so frequently. There's also a case for cards like Fan, but I, I think you still want the SI, you still want the backstab. Even Eviscerate to a certain degree is not too bad in, in some cases if they just, with, with Savage Combatant being such a popular pick, it's not too uncommon to like use Eviscerate early on in the game as Rogue. But you just, you still want the, uh, the, the, the threats, the minions that can be on the board. Well, this hand does answer the, uh, the Darnassus Aspirant, but I think Oskaka might be pushed to use that coin. It is something I'm sure he doesn't want to do, though. I mean, you you can. I think, I think the threat of the four drop is not as significant as it used to be because Pilot Shredder was such a problematic oh, card for Rogue. You you can deadly poison it, and you'd still take like nine to 12, 13 damage sometimes because mm -hmm. the minion was just so resilient. <clears throat> Versus Savage Combatant, you can actually clean remove it, like we were mentioning. Um, but it is still a big threat that you want to take out. Like, it's just not as big as it used to be. And, and it so, just so happens that it's okay. Like, Druid doesn't really want to be playing Keeper of the Grove <laughs> uh, to the face anyways. So, that that's like the power of the imminent threat as opposed to the actual threat. Mm -hmm. Well, the Deadly Poison works very well here, as the only minion that the Druid can develop is something that dies immediately to the Deadly Poison. But I think even when that happens, you're not too sad about it. So um, I'd be surprised to see Tice not make that play, as um, 
you know, just dropping a weapon drops another blade flurry potential. And that's even more relevant now than before. Because before you could play things like, uh, like oil to give you a third and maybe even a fourth weapon buff for blade flurry. But um, now you just have the two deadly poisons. Well, some people are running Assassin's Blade in this tournament. Mm -hmm. I don't think Oskaka is of that anymore. In fact, I think we have no more Assassin's Blade remaining. We've seen a good chunk of Oskaka's deck. He's got the Cold Bloods, the Shivs. He's got the Van Cleefs. But he doesn't really have those huge, crazy, like, Leroy's and Shadow Steps and whatnot. Um, in fact, he just has to win with board control. He chooses uh, also to read Dagger as opposed to play the Farseer. And this is because now that he has SI 7H and he really wants to try and establish good board presence once again mm -hmm. by using Deadly Poison and the SI. So I, I like that he's planning his future turns instead of going for very obvious like, oh yeah, of course I Farseer. I have two of them and I just killed. Yep. That's uh, that's the idea, but it might not work out too well. I, must I mean, you do combo, but you're comboing against the uh, very mediocre minion. I think here you might even just Farseer, I think is the, the interesting part. As far seeing here, you can uh, Shiv and SI. Oh, no, he's going to go for it. Very aggressive for the board. Yeah, that's, I think that's what Rogue really wants. Just keep the board as clean as possible. They're, they're OCD in a way because of it. They just keep wanting to scrub everything as clean as possible so that way they can have these minions, which don't seem imposing. Three threes aren't the like game defining stat lines but with cold blood as a potential threat and as you as you like start to line up more draws into conceals and have the gadgets and to rev the engines i mean the deck can rack up damage quick i i have to admit i've been underestimating how much damage the cold bloods would do just mm -hmm. because we haven't seen it very commonly in the metagame but now that i see it in action given the removal options for many classes now it seems really effective uh, what can we expect this turn? Probably Wrath for three. Standard two one ones. One ones are quite effective against the deadly poison weapon hero power. Fairly low tempo turn, but I mean, it seems like the druids do just miss a turn or two. It's just the way that they roll out typically. Yeah, um, it's a good point. Like. When Druid rolls out all that momentum and, and tempo, it's like, you really need to stop it, but when it doesn't, it just seems like it can't do anything. Uh, and because the hero power still doesn't have much effect, it's not putting anything on the board, it's not the most amount of damage, and the life gain it has is somewhat negligible sometimes until the late stages of uh, the match. Emperor Thorson here seems to be the foregone conclusion, just because you don't have anything else to do. But... So Pretty good. Like you can keep her and um, well not keep her. You can um, ancient of lore and use the Darnassus aspirant next turn together. Mm -hmm. We're not very optimistic though. I think because Rogue has holding like a decent amount of cards. Oh man, look at this aggressive move again. I was, see, this is one of the things that I was thinking. I was like, wow, he just drew Tomb Pillager. That's convenient for the mana usage. But it, like, Rogue is just going to keep leveraging his board. And mm -hmm. you just have to imagine as if the Cold Blood is kind of like an oil, where it's just, yeah, I'm just going to use this board and, and use my removal so that way I can keep doing damage. And I'm going to use Sap. I'm going to use my Conceal to once again mask this as 8 damage, 12 damage, maybe even you know around there. Instead of four. Well, he will get multiple damage hits, but the issue is that he might just die to a combo. Guide my lance. Like, uh, if the Ancient is still up and he draws a Force of Nature, that's lethal. You are correct. He's got to sap it. That kind of works. You can sap it. Yeah, you can sap, play the Pillager, and conceal after you kill the Aspirant. That's, that's pretty reasonable. Would you kill the aspirant? Well, that's that's, a, that's also a good question. Maybe you can set up a lethal that way. Yeah, actually, you're right. You don't kill the aspirant. You just go face. Mm -hmm. Because then you have um, you. 15 damage, and then you force your opponent to Ancient of Lord heal. So, uh, yeah, I think I think that's the right play. Good observation, Crip. 
Well. Hmm. Yeah. I guess you're forced to heal yourself. You could. No, you can't do that. I was like, you could try to get away with just a farseer, but I think Wonder. the Ancient of Lore heal yourself is your best course of action. Yeah, throw a hero power in there. And you can uh, redraw with um, Wild Growth and still combo if you draw it. So, Bias could, could still win this game. This is yeah. not over. Now, uh, not out of the question. Right now, we're looking for Eviscerate off the top. Uh, eviscerate would be 20 damage. Mm. That can draw, oh. though. Yeah, the that coin. We forgot about that. So, Gadget Sand, coin, but you can't lethal this turn. No. Well, yeah, you could. Like prep Eviscerate, prep Eviscerate. Good luck. Yeah, you're right. Not not, oh. not the prep. Oh, that that could work. No, no, oh, oh no, he's going for the trade. Yeah, doesn't want swipe to ruin him. Perfectly reasonable. Yeah. Man, that cold blood has done 12 damage so far. On top of the farce you're hitting every turn. Again, getting so much mileage out of something that we we weren't really anticipating being able to do. No, and oh, the Dynarsis Aspirin dying also means no wild growth cycle for Tice. Yep. That's brutal. That is pretty brutal. Not only is there that is... brutal, is that the game? Oh, man. Hmm. Well, what if he doesn't give credit for any more spells? If he gives no gadgets. credit for spells, yeah. he leaves the gadgets and he kills the 7 3 and he heals. I think that's his best move. It says, I hope you have no spells. I mean, Bro's yeah. only holding two cards. That it's might be a higher there. likelihood. Well, he can kill the Gadgets, and he's actually alive because he heals himself. He's alive to the board. So he, he actually could kill both. Yeah, but the problem is now he's still, you're still giving him... You still have a chance to win, but it depends on what you think is more likely. Is it more likely he has spells to kill you now, or he has spells to draw into things that kill you later? Thanos, Backstab, Van Cleef, and you know what? Um, Druid could still win. Druid could still win. So that's why you have to trade into these minions uh, and kill them somehow. Hmm. Yeah, the 3-3 three, three into the 2-4 and a dagger puts you at 15 which I think is out of combo range. Uh, as Supposedly, far as you correct. see it, yeah. Supposedly. There's only, there's only one Tharson card. I mean, what could it be, right? That you haven't played. and you. Yeah, okay, you're right, you're right. It's, it's not likely, but it's the reality. That's the thing that you have to always be the most careful about. Well, the Vancleef would be a 6-6. Six, six. Hmm. Uh, kind of work. All right. Okay. Goes for the super safe play. Now it's a swipe that will uh, that will do some decent damage here. Swipe would make the rogue life really difficult, but it gives it a draw. And Tice has three draws: one with the turn, two with the wild grows. What combo? He almost had it. So, oh my god. Crip, you're saying, ah, yeah, as far as he knows, but that, uh, Oskaga somehow stayed alive. He played around the Innervate combo, or in this case, the Thorazin reduced mm -hmm. combo. Hmm. I think he has okay. to draw. I think he's thinking of defensively comboing, but I think if he does that, he w he's kind of throwing his win condition. A defensive combo would mean two savage treants into the 6-6, six, six, one into the 7-1, and a hero power into the 3-3. Three, three. Oh, I guess he's doing it. He doesn't want to take any chances. This is his one, one chance to do it. If he was able to still kill the Farseer without having to hero power, he certainly would wild growth, but he now needs to. So he doesn't want to wild growth, realize he needs to do this, and then he's in trouble. Uh, fans really nothing, just... Cycles through lose the deck. Lose three mana. Yeah, lose three mana, draw a card. No! Oh, God! Gain back the three mana! <laughs> <laughs> wow. 
Wow, both of these guys with just pretty empty hands, but the good thing is that wild growth can cycle. Preparation only can cycle with the catch and sand. Mm -hmm. Well, prep can combo. That that is that is relevant. Yes. It might give him a, an extra out. Nice draw. Is it? I think you're looking for better than that. I think you want two chances at, at like a taunt. So you want the wild growth first? Well, it's obviously not easy because it hasn't happened yet. <laughs> but I, I'm thinking that wild growth might have a better expected result. Yeah, wild growth still gives you the ability to hero power and Azure Drake if you need to kill the Thalnos. But I don't know if you even want to kill Thalnos. It's like one of those you things that you want, up. You don't want to kill Thalnos. You want Thalnos to to kill itself. Yeah, you want si you want to silence Thalnos. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> He 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 could have a two turn lethal crit. Yep. If Ragnaros plays and goes to the face, he had nine and a rogue can't kill him. I mean that's that's your out. You gotta go for it. I guess so. Oskaka will get two draws though. I think Oskaka is uh is above fifty percent to win this game. I think Oskaka is, is actually probably in like the sixties or seventies. Especially with that. Oh no. oh no, not with that though. Oh, oh no! What? But, but you know the thing is, uh, he, he still has another turn because Ragnaros didn't hit the face. But like, so now if he picks up Gadget Sand, it's almost certainly going to be lethal, right? Because he's going to keep hitting face with the hero power, so he's going to be at four. And no matter what Druid does, he just has to get one Gadget Sand or one Eviscerate, and the game's over. I can't believe this is happening. Those are the worst draws in the entire deck in consecutive order. <laughs> oh man, that's Drake then. Drake gives you a best chance for some kind of taunt, right? A no. wild growth? Oh, because he wants yeah. a hero power again too. Hero power and taunt. That also makes sense. He's giving up his tokens for it. No, it didn't do anything. Farseer number two. I think he plays oh, another combo. So all he has to do is stay alive. It doesn't matter. He was gonna win next turn anyways. I think. Like putting down to eight. No! Wow! He's gonna show that. His hand. Oh that my. is some real RNG there. What, what card game? What was that worse than that? Card games in a nutshell. It's There's like, nothing worse than that. Yeah, but that's just the way card games go, Crip. There's nothing uh, There's nothing you can do. No amount of blaming Dr. Boomer Shredder will fix that. <laughs> oh, my. Wow. Uh, but you know never what? Lucky. That was quite the turnaround. I mean, that's that's ultimately why some people really love these these kinds of games. Mm -hmm. For better or for worse, because the human psyche. You can always come back. You never know what's going to happen. And you always think, it's not likely, right? How, how to, to draw those four cards... Uh, in those orders, very unlikely, but it did happen, and then it gave Tice a very crucial game one win. Yeah. Uh, it was a pretty crucial one. I mean, the, uh, those are both decks that I think can win uh, fairly well. That's uh, Warrior now. I think this is actually a, a great matchup for Tice. The Warrior you think deck Warrior is... Rogue is still very good for the Warrior. Um, well. If it can get a win here, it won't automatically lose versus the Druid, so I like that part. That's true. The, the, like losing here would be a, a, a very snowball -y effect because mm -hmm. uh, you missed your window to win with a better matchup, so you have to play a worse matchup now. Yeah. I think the very best matchup that works. For might be Shaman. I think it is Shaman. Yes. Oskaka has Druid and Shaman after this Rogue. Tice has the Priest. So the reason why, traditionally, the, the Warrior felt very good against Rogue, and we're talking about controlled, defensive-type Warriors that have access to Shield Block, Justicar, etc., is because a Rogue has a finite amount of damage and a finite amount of minions. Mm -hmm. And because it's so spell-intensive, it doesn't have access to, um, to much uh, pressure if you can't cons uh, forcibly seize the tempo. However, Warrior's lost some of its best tools. It's lost Death Bite, which is a great answer to Violet Teacher. It's lost Brawl, which used to be one of the ways you actually can fight Gadgets and Conceal. 
and, and other lose teams, brawl. So. It's just they're not sorry, playing. Sorry, uh, sorry. This deck is not playing brawl. You're you're yeah. absolutely. Uh, so these are some strikes against it. Even though maybe the matchup still might favor the warrior from uh, from our opinion, no. it's it's an interesting perspective. Hmm. Well, it's uh it's a good start to a rogue hand, I'd say. Like this this type of hand can lead to a really disgusting game if he gets a gadgets in, in the uh, in the nick of time here. Followed by prep, conceal prep, gold blood. <laughs> Well, in some scenarios, those consecutive draws are awesome. Yeah, definitely, man. I mean, it's, it's really cool because it feels like Oskaka has found, like, when he was playing with the Cold Bloods on the Farseer, it felt like he found a way to win that was not something that a lot of people would have done. You know, uh, it's a very aggressive route that ended up not working out, but I would say, like, eight or nine times out of ten, that's a win. So, you know, Ty's definitely feeling very fortunate here. He's got the Fierce Monkey to answer the uh, Deadly Poison Dagger, which is just a really nice curve. Three, four, five, followed by a couple bashes, which line up very well against some of those smaller threats from Rogue. All right, well, that's the Gadgetson you wanted. Gadgetson, and I mean, he's also got Azure Drake to start drawing stuff before it, too. So oh, he's got some. He's got some really good tools. I'm, I'm really liking Rogue's hand, even though Dragon Warrior is curving out pretty well. The uh, choice to kill the uh, the monkey there is to allow the uh, Tomb Pillager to stay alive one turn because it's so difficult to do this four damage. Um, you really have to do like uh, some executing. And I mean, I know it's in the deck, right? Execute is in this warrior deck. But we haven't seen it in like forever, right? It's weird. Um, normally, in those executes, it's one of Warrior's premium removal spells. Sh you'd rather drop Shield Slam before you drop the execute. That's what most uh, Warrior decks do. Even if you're playing Face Warrior or Patient Warrior, you'd rather have the executes than the Shield Slams. Yeah. So uh, I'm surprised we haven't seen access to it as as easily. Maybe maybe they did cut one of the executes. I don't know. It's it's one of those weird things where you have so much stuff that you want to jam pack in a Dragon deck. Because there's so many synergies across the board, maybe they did end up dropping a couple of removal pieces. I'm not sure. All right. Well, pretty good opportunity for the um, for the Black and Corruptor to start to come back. I mean, this this is again one of those games where the control deck is on the ropes the whole what time against the rogue. The but uh, we've seen that those are winnable. Yeah, definitely uh, winnable. If they just flip the switch and Rogue can't answer it immediately, if Rogue uses all its saps and eviscerates and then Ysera somehow comes out safely, then Warrior will will just outcard the Rogue. I mean, it's just such a story that Rogue players have known for years now. You're going to run out of cards. You're going to be top decking against uh, decks that gain a lot of life. And you're going to need to establish the board and hope that your minions can attack three times the face or more. Thank you. Alright, well, looks like it's all out on the minion. Goes for the face hit. I think against uh, something that wasn't a warrior or a priest, you'd probably trade there. But the uh, the face hit is just uh, important because you know the warrior gains quite a bit of armor. You know you're not dealing with, with quite 30 health. It's uh, a, a good deal, a good deal more than that. Mmm. Man, if only Bash was able to do four. You know what's so funny, Crip? Back when uh, when GVG and all of them were st first starting to really hit its stride along with Nax Ramus, everyone kept saying that four was no longer a good health. Everyone was saying five was the key. That's why five fives were really good. Mm -hmm. um, because that was four was again. Four attack. Yeah. Shredder was four attack. Uh, swipe was around. Death Spite was around. So everyone wanted to play five. But now it seems to be four is the in really inconvenient number still. Because we lost access to so much of that. And, that. and that's what people were talking about when you're talking about extending the power levels of cards. Well, it's time um, to draw. Here we go. So Eviscerate with Cold Blood. That's a lot of draw potential here. And damage potential. Uh, if, would you Cold Blood first? Because you might be able to pick up Prep. 
prep evis yeah, you could prep eviscerate and you can dagger for the deadly poison next turn. I like it. Yeah, very very small, subtle thing, but could make a difference if you're really trying to squeeze it out all kinds of efficiency, especially against a player like Tice. This is the mark of a good player once again by Oskako. And Tice can't really do much to remove this whole board. Um he can bash down either the Drake or the Gadgeson. He's gonna go for the Drake. Yep, coin. Try to see if he can uh, once again kill off this other. Oh, Gadgeson. he can kill both off because of the Tarsus. Oh, I yeah. missed that. Person. Yep. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it's really strong from this point. And um, well, you know, with a prep, that also could be a big Van Cleef. He just used two of his removal options. So you have to imagine that, uh, you know, he doesn't have many ways to strike back. Oh, man. Prep. Prep fan. Fan. Uh, you, you probably play conceal after you drop the... No, I don't think there's any concealing here. Okay. I think you've seen a lot of removal, and you're just banking on this not ten, ten. being victimized by it. Is the execute come now? You know, I'm really starting to think maybe, like, now that you've mentioned it, I didn't really pay attention to it in the past, but I, I really can't remember last time I saw an execute. Mm-hmm. Well, the warrior's still quite healthy. Maybe it's just time to Ysera. Looks like it. Ysera tries to draw something big. The that is big. not bad against the... Van Cleave, except there's a conceal play. Yeah. So now he needs like brawl. No, he's just gonna spam taunts next turn and hope for the best. But uh, that is gonna be quite hopeful. Yeah, uh, yeah, he just dump everything. Farce here as well. He goes in. It's basically a hot pot at this moment. Just throw it all. Making quite the stew here, and uh, back over to the warrior, needs to immediately try to do something. He doesn't have a dragon to even get taunts. I think you slammed your Sarah to try and draw a little bit more here. Yeah. You need a chance to draw into a taunt minion. Yeah, as it stands, you lose to the board. That's not good enough. You have to slam. I don't know what can come out of this. But may maybe there's an actually a brawl in here that Ysera wins and gets everyone salty. Looks like uh -huh. that's not the case, though. Except, except Tice. Tice wouldn't be salty. That is enough. More than enough. And Ysera not able to do anything uh, against the might of the 1010 Van Cleef. These conceal Van Cleef plays for Moskaka are so ballsy, man. I don't know how he sits down. I think maybe uh, the players have analyzed the decks better than we have. I think there's some chance Execute is completely cut from that deck. I think we might just be reminiscing off the other failed warrior decks at the tournament. <laughs> That's a good point. What a, what a weird, radical concept uh, to play a control -y style of mid-range like Dragon Warrior without, yeah. like, without Grom, without uh, Executes, like, at least from what we've seen, right? I mean, we've seen Varian pulled almost every game by now, so surely we'd have seen other other cards pulled if that deck was any good at uh, drawing those cards. We'll see. Druid versus Priest. This time, Oskaka's on the Druid. Tice going to try and flip the uh, the advantage back into his favor because Os Oskaka should be up 2-0, but Tice managed to sneak one away and even it up. I do like the position of uh, the Priest here. Um, I think the Priest with a decent hand can adequately fight against the druid unless ramp is too rampant and it might be this time <laughs> I mean that's that's a double wild growth hand but I don't think you keep two wild growths ever yeah well okay it's not that you don't ever keep double wild growths is that if you do there's a huge risk uh, associated mm -hmm. that you might not actually play the second one because you, you you filled your deck out with plays from turn three onwards so, you know, there's a high chance that you might just want to play the minions instead of Wild Growth thing. Not to mention that you're also just down cards, because Wild Growth, uh, after you gain the Mana Crystal, sinks into the Abyss. There's just no way you can draw another card with it unless you cycle it at 10. Hmm. Um, 
And as a result, you're just down cards and no minions on board. Yeah. He does have a good curve going out of it, though. Yeah, the Raptor into the uh, the Keeper. Very nice. Not going to work all that well from what we see, though. Not really, um, because the way Priest plays, they play like a half mana curve above your opponent. So the War Rest Agent's like really two and a half, maybe even three mana. Um, same with like Twilight Guardian, same with the Blackwing Technician. All those cards are just slightly above their mana cost, which just makes it very hard for you to climb back if you spend your entire turn developing uh, a slightly weaker minion. We have the uh, Twilight Whelp here. But if you play the Twilight Whelp, you can't play the Twilight Guardian next turn. So yeah. I think, I, I think I like the Bran. Yeah, I think I like the Bran Pass. It is going to get punished by Swipe, and I think that's what Tice is considering. Well, too bad. Yeah, swipe, I, it is. swipe is a punish, um, but it's, it's also like weak reactive play from druid and you can play the twilight guardian most likely being able to answer whatever comes out the following turn so i'm still not hating the priest position even though swipe here is really good trade first see what comes out i don't think there's anything really of value even if it that's oh. awesome that's pretty funny that yeah. is so funny oh my goodness Especially if it gets to the point where Priest can steal that. That would be hilarious. That's true, actually. You said that there's not many targets worth taking in the Druid if you're the um, if you're the Priest player. But that might be one of them. Mm, I really like the, uh, the Savage Combatant here. Uh, let's see. Savage Combatant is... Yeah, I guess it challenges pretty well. Like, even if your opponent Holy Novas is something, you can't really kill it easily. No Valence chosen to punish you, so... I'm, I'm down. I think uh, Savage Combatant's okay. It's also pretty good next turn, too, though. Savage Combatant, if it dies, the Holy Nova would actually oh, draw his Kaka card. Right, because no Shire Cleric. <laughs> but, um, I think it's also really... I think it's just as good next turn... Uh, versus Keeper of the Grove next turn is a little bit weak to set up for the following, like, because you don't get the hero power this turn. So I think it's okay to do this, for sure. Mm -hmm. You have also two Keepers of the Grove, so to in increase the diversity of your plays. Well, Thais is thinking about playing Power Word Shield on the existing minion versus the top minion that he'd produce next turn. <laughs> Guess they both win. Wow. From Oasis Snapdraw to my Exna to, <laughs> at this point, is really just like, this two yeah. attack Are minion is not going to be doing too me? much. Good. If he gets a dragon here, it'd be great. It does not. Oh, I would definitely not attack that. Oh, I guess he's thinking of stealing the Keeper. Yeah. Mm. He's going to steal the Keeper of the Grove. Even though Northshire Cleric is awesome on paper, I still feel like you want to take the more stats on board. Drawing cards can be irrelevant. You can have eight cards in hand, but still be afraid of combo. Well, that's a pretty good Emperor, too. Well, the Emperor reduces the cost of Force of Nature, which is good. Even the Ancient of Lore being six mana is pretty effective as well, letting you squeeze in some other stuff on following turns. But, uh, you know, I, I think it's, it's still a pretty good opportunity, yeah, to use the Savage Combatant because it just so happens to kill off this 2-6. And your hand is not the best for Thor's. You can still use it after uh, Ancient of Lore as well, which is something people don't really think of too often. They think, oh, Thor's been curved into the lore, but lore can also be played before Thor's and they give you more cards to hit and reduce. All right, well, let's take a minion. Let's kill the North Shire. Let change your mind. Yeah, take the more powerful minion. Oh. Savage Combatant, though. Oh, my Number gosh. Two. That can be awesome. I mean, right now, Ancient of Lore still feels pretty good, but you have an option to snipe this 4-5 with just a hero power alone. 
Yeah, that's, that's awesome. very nice. I wonder if he's gonna... No, there's no point in attacking anything from face here. Yeah. If you're getting Holy Nova, you're getting Holy Nova. No. He already used Power Word Shield, so it doesn't feel like you can get punished too much for not hitting. Um, not to mention that you have two Savage Combatants, so now the onus is on him to like figure out a way to pressure, like to kill this and remove the from the board. Mm -hmm. I think there's some chance that Almost the priest will just spam the board. Twilight, Twilight Whelp into Northshire into Azure Drake. Just again, like a very desperate play. Is someone injured? It looks like he wants to heal and draw a card, pick up more options. Oh, this could be uh, a very bad option. Oh. And it is a very bad option. Yikes. So we choose to pick up a card, which doesn't pay off. Of course, neighbor to number two. Hmm. Um, now we can play Hero Power and Thorson. Hero Power will kill the 2 3. Thorson will reduce two Force of Natures. Yeah, I mean, the Force of Natures being reduced is not that big of a deal, I guess. It's pretty good. I mean, if yeah, you it's think, not bad. If you think your Emperor will stay alive, that's great. And I think there's a very real expectation that it would stay alive. Well, here's the fun thing. Um, now, because Force of Nature is 5 mana each, you actually have a 12 damage 2 card combo that I don't think they're necessarily expecting, because if you play Savage Roars, you're like, oh yeah, I can't really do anything. Nope, 2 Force of Nature's for 12. Holy Smite with the Azure Drake is a kill on the Emperor, but you have two big problems right now, not just one. Right, Savage Combatant still... A really big deal, but that Thorson is just a higher priority. He, it's almost insta lose if Tice just lets this Thorson live. Yeah. I wonder. What about the Twilight Whelp? You think you should play that? You've already been swiped once. Yeah, the thing about the Twilight Whelp is, um,. You, oh, the you heal. can't really heal your Oh, minion. the heal lets you... Yeah, the heal lets you keep the, the Drake. Yeah. That's, that's significantly better. Oh, right. no disgusting Omega combo there. Omega combo? Yeah. <laughs> if he did get another uh, Tharson tick, it would have been the... Uh, the Exodia there, right? Like the Exodia? It really is against Priest, because Priest can't heal beyond 30. And I mean, the ultimate yeah. force of nature, force of nature, Savage Roar, Savage Roar is like 40 damage or something like that. Yeah. Well, even even without the second Savage Roar, it's it's almost 30, isn't it? Uh, it's, uh, it's 30. 12. Isn't it? Plus 14 is 26. Oh, okay. Oh, from, yeah, just from the board. Uh, counting the Savage Combatant. It's, uh... He goes for the Force of Nature, and I guess he can also play the Keeper if he wants to just get onto the board. Sure. But if this isn't a big signal that he has a combo, I don't know what it is. Yeah. And I don't know if uh, Tice has anything he can do about it. He just kind of has to take it and hope Let that he doesn't have it. Yep. Man, uh, this is the struggle of the priest against the druid. Once again, uh, Tice is going to drop this match. He's going to have to kill the aggro shaman of Oskaka in order to stay relevant in the series. Uh, yeah, that might be a little bit difficult to do. He does have two decks that are tailored quite well to do that, but uh, we have seen that with, with some draws, the aggro shaman is basically unstoppable. And we have to also consider that Oskaka is not really playing the typical aggro shaman. We've seen a ton of aggro shaman, and it's easy to forget that Oskaka is not playing quite that list. He's playing a list with two t um, Tuskar Totemics and at least one hex. I'm pretty sure two hexes, just based on the frequency that we've seen them. And that might have a big implication where a, l a lot of um, why Tice has been successful with dealing with shamans is because of the like big taunt minions and that kind of stuff. And the hex might play into that. It might be bigger board developments. We've seen that the warrior basically has zero, way zero ways to clear the board. 
Yeah. I think uh, the big thing that you have to really consider as well is like how good the shaman can curve because if it didn't curve well, we saw one of the weirdest lines that ended up working well with Zolay yesterday, right? I guess Life Coach, he had Doomhammer, Rockbiter, Elemental Destruction, and like a two drop, like Flame Juggler. And he's like, uh-huh. you know what? Forget trying to like rock biter down this Northshire just playing far behind in damage. I'm just gonna wait for him to load the board and then inevitably play elemental destruction and combo him down. Um that kind of stuff is is more of like how Shaman has to adapt around the burst, but also a bigger implication that priests still can't finish the shaman and shaman can just sit collecting cards for a while and try to end the game. It's gonna be a very different shaman uh shaman game here, I believe. Looks like the Trog opener is going to have uh, a big impact, though. Yeah, the Trog gives so much weight to the actual cards because they deal damage and they have an effect. So, ancestral knowledge, deal two damage, draw two cards. Feral Spirit, deal two damage, summon two two threes. So, uh, all these oh, different gonna things. He's going to play the Northshire. Is someone injured? Oh! Wow. He's going to get destroyed. Wow! Even more than we realize. Yeah. So uh, now lightning bolt is a relevant thing to snipe something and then also buff it even more. I have to imagine you want to play Wormrest Agent here. What's a one mana overload card besides lightning bolt? Just lightning bolt. Right. I think so. So if, if Lightning Bolt's the only one mana overload, then you don't have anything else to be afraid of because you can't. Oh, well. that works. <laughs> but yeah. I, I was thinking that Lightning Bolt face might actually be the play. What I don't like about that is the uh, overload, and I want to be able to play four mana next turn for sure. But yeah. I guess it also does set up your. It does set up your Doom Hammer a lot worse because you know you don't have that five mana access. To oh man. There's another one! Replacements oh. have arrived. Not bad. He even has the Pyromancer coin. Uh, Wormrest Agent. Pretty sick. That's, a, that's exactly what you're looking for with this Pyromancer. Just not not like the flashy kill the yeah. board full of 1 1s of Bod Teacher target. Just like great, gain some tempo, threaten your opponent, and now. The Shaman is in an awkward spot. I don't want to actually set myself up that I can't Doomhammer, but. What do I do this turn then? Yeah. Well, you can you can perhaps play Finley, and if the best option for hero powers is a mage, you can just maybe uh, ping and drop your turn that way. And that way, you, you're not overloaded. You can doom hammer down the two four next turn. That's a good point. Um, that might be the best way to set up the weapon. Uh, doom hammer is so valuable. To how you pressure the priest, but um, if it was only that two four, you could argue that maybe it's better. But that pyromancer out there, it becomes really complicated because it's an extra three damage. The spells that it can combo with are very powerful. Just have to be careful. All right, let's see what it is. Oh, we don't get to see the hero powers, damn. It's more. Oh, there it is. The hunter hero power. Uh, that, that is when Thrall has fir- the, hit the first level of Super Saiyan. Um, and, and now he's just going to really rush. Mm, what do you do here? I, I feel like the Wild Pyromancer is so important against this deck that it kind of sucks to throw it away. Yeah, so you, I guess you could uh, Power Word Shield and then, mm. you know, Love Tap the Finley. And then heal heal up the minion. You can hit it with the Wormrest Agent and heal it back to full health. I kind of like that. Um, yeah. But maybe he's just going to ignore it. Just say, you can keep your minion. You already mm-hmm. used Abusive Sergeant, so... Yeah, the more, the more, the more I see this, the more convinced I am this is the best play. I mean, it, it's... It, it just... It sucks to have a passive play against this deck, but... It's just so much better in terms of results. Well, I mean, the passive play would be to uh, be very defensive and just keep clearing the minion. Not going. And this is actually a very aggressive play to to 
lower the life and just be like, okay, I'm going to play for the board. Um, and I, I kind of like that as well. Do you want to put the more health on the Twilight Guardian, or do you want to put it onto the Pyromancer? I think against any other Shaman, you'd put it on the Guardian, but against this one, you have to deal with Earthshock and Hex. Right, that's a good point. You don't want to all in uh, all. You don't want to put all of your eggs in one basket. Mm -hmm. Make the Twilight Guardian an, as a, it's already a lightning rod for removal, but even making it more so. Tice does not respect the Murlocs at all. He's gonna hit the face twice. No, oh, I think okay. I think he's gonna trade. I think he's just weighing in his options. Yeah. The trade is very good there. That far seer is is interesting though. I like it because I think he's anticipating that he's probably going to play Cabal Shadow Priest and he wants to get more pressure onto the board. Mm -hmm. With two attacks to the face with this nine on the board, that's lethal. Assuming that works out as conveniently as we said. And Oskaka only has hmm. defensive board control cards. I mean, you could make a case that this might even be a mid-range Shaman Hand outside of that Lava Burst. You can completely clear this board with spells. You can do Lightning Bolt, Lava Shock on the Pyromancer, and then um, Lava Burst on the 3-5. Alright, Hex accomplishes the same thing. However, um, there's still going to be minions following up. This would be a fantastic play if Tyson didn't have any minions to play, but he still has some. I think you still, like, assuming he doesn't pick anything else up. Oh, that's a good thing to pick up. <laughs> yep, that's perfect. Because if you play Cabal Shadow Priest, he wouldn't get the value, and he is about to get the value. Hmm. I feel like if if you really want to battle for minions, you you have to fully control the board. I feel like we might see an ancestral knowledge first, and I think he might delay flooding the board with minions one more turn. Yeah, that's a really good uh that's a really good point. You might want to Delay it and stagger it so you don't uh, completely overwhelm yourself. Plus, does, you you really need like an earth shock or something to get past this. Well, you can uh, you can get a hex as well. I think he has two. He seems to draw at least one every single game. Mm. Oh wow! It's a lot of juggles as time goes on. <laughs> Are you sure we're out of uh, GBG and Max cards? <laughs> uh, if you're missing Implosion, you can always just use uh, Feral Spirits. Mm -hmm. Skaka saves an attack on his Doomhammer uh, as the Priest is at 30, and attacking once might not actually accomplish anything. If the Priest has floating mana, Let he would just heal. No value on the Cabal, but you know, even though we see the Feral Spirits, Tice just wants to take a uh, a very strong aggressive stance onto the board. Urshock a turn too late. Now also Oskaka is in a position of uh, man, I really want to start hero powering. I really need to start doing the damage, but I can't. I'm way too overloaded. What do He's I even? He's got a pass. What? I think it's hero power pass. Hit once to the face. Hero power. I don't even know about that. Um. I think that's what he's considering. I don't. I'd be really surprised to see a knife juggler here. He needs to stretch this out as as far as possible. Hmm. Knife juggler and two feral spirits costs eight mana. So two, two charges on the weapon just in case a rock biter is drawn. Yeah, it makes sense. More healing. <laughs> Dice is back up to full HP again. I wonder if he, um, I wonder if he's just gonna hold on to it. But I think he should still play the Farseer. He, except he has no real threat for lethal unless he picks up Holy Nova. So he might feel like he wants to maximize his heals, like make he, uh, Farseer heal for five mm -hmm. to four. I disagree with that because I think next turn he wants to play Nefarian. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm down for the the heal thing because you might draw into lethal. You might not need Nefarian. The moment you pick up Blackwing Corruptor, the game's over. From that perspective, but we right, know that life there's... juggler, what you got? These could be some really good juggles. Put this apple on your head. It just needs to land on minions and not face. I think it just has to land on the one minion. There's 
Um, there's a very small chance you actually kill the, uh, uh, the four or five. I think hmm. he's thinking about playing the totem golem here so he can get an extra hero power in. And I think that might be correct. I think that's good because um, you really need to start maximizing your damage as much as possible. It's also, uh, you don't really give up too much more damage and it's just like a really effective way to do it. And I don't know if you want to even attack with the Doom Hammer because if, say if you pick another Doom Hammer, you can still attack with it after you break yeah. your first one. All right, is it is it's it time Nefarian to play time. conservative or is it time to play yeah. Nefarian? It's always time to play Nefarian. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, there's also a viable other play. You can Shadow Word Pain and play the Twilight Open Heals. You float four mana though; it doesn't feel that great. No. There are a lot of um, there are a lot of cards here that work very well. You also have to keep in mind that. Um, you know, Tice doesn't know that Oskaka has more taunts. So if he plays Nefari oh, and kills one taunt here, he still has the Shadow Word Pain. It's Wrong <laughs> player and Ancestral's Call. Well, one of those is decent. Uh, the Rock Fighter might counter yeah. another taunt minion. So if he gets, like, another Shadow Word Pain or another way to kill the, the third taunt minion, he might push for lethal here. Yeah, sure. Um... Let's see, 3, 6, 8, 10, 15, 17 damage. Still a lot. Yeah. Oh, with, uh, by the way, the upside of juggles. That's oh, a great goodness. juggle. Oh, That's my God. Excellent juggle. Ty's shaking his head. Oh, devastating. I think it's time to go. It's time to go. Just all at face. Let's go. I bet he wished that Cabal Shadow Priest stole one of the wolves. That'd be great. Now Shadow of Pain, Rock Biters, you only can clear so much. Is that it? Ball that looks like it. Wow. I think that's it. Yeah, you can hit face. You can uh, clear you can clear one of the walls Let by stealing it. You can shoot it with the spell <laughs> and he has the rock biter. Even Tice is surprised. He's like, whoa, I what? Yeah. I think he was really <laughs> devastated by that previous play. <laughs> that, that means we're going to game five. That was pretty epic. It was pretty epic. That Nefarian came down just in time. I think if he actually held back on Nefarian, he would have lost that game. Yeah, it's too defensive of a play. Mm -hmm. Man, that Shaman's still presenting a threat. Can't believe it. Yeah, but now it's it's Shaman Warrior. Um, it, I feel like Tice might have the advantage here. I think that's the best matchup for the Warrior. I'm not sure it's over 50%, but I, I think it is. Barely. Uh, I mean, it's still it's still in the process of discovery. I think we don't know for sure. I think we're using anecdotal evidence plus theory crafting. Um, you know, some some of these matchups that you'll see in say the upcoming you know winter preliminaries this weekend for North America, those decks have been played thousands and thousands of times. Yeah. Um, therefore, they, we really understand how matchups work. In this case, Dragon Warrior is still in this weird floaty thing. They don't even have Execute, which happens to be okay against a low health minion base in this deck. Um, not to mention that you know they don't really necessarily have the Death Spite, which used to help clear a lot of the early game. They have to rely on a Wrathy Weaponsmith instead. So going to game number five, this is where it's all on the line. Who is going to fight against Savitz in the grand finals? Oskak or Tice? Uh, the opening hands seem to be... Undecided. I mean, yeah. like Tice is, is probably going through his head, like, how many of these things am I going to drop to get Fiery War Axe? I need Fiery War Axe. You know, how, how deep are we going here? Right. We're going deep. Three. <laughs> He even throws away Bash, which is uh, a card that you can definitely use, but he'd rather have that early game. Oh, wait, no, he kept Bash. Okay, well, it looks like... No, I think he drew into the other one. Oh, exactly, then. It just so happened to be the, the same position. I think so. I think it really looked like a three-card mulligan. Maybe it was a bug with Spectator, though. Mm. Maybe I just didn't see it correctly. But uh, Tyson's opener is okay. Uh, the main problem is Oskaka's opener is outstanding. 
So, uh, yeah. That is a bit of an issue. Yeah. He has a couple of options. He can go for a normal curve. He can also go for a, a, a hyper-aggressive curve where he can use the knife juggler as turn one and then play off of that. Like, you can play uh, the one, two, two. Um, tunnel trawl because you don't have direct overload, so it doesn't really benefit too much from playing turn one. And then abusive sergeant or rock biter as needed. It's, I personally uh, like being really aggressive. Yeah. I kind of like the Tunnel Trog. I think if you have to weigh in all the cards you might draw, if you play Tunnel Trog, the chance that you get a uh, 1, 2, or 3 mana overload is really, really, really high. <laughs> Alright, works for me. Juggler comes out. The War oh, fire War X. The top. Oh my god. <laughs> Wow. wow. Nice. He leans in like, oh, wow, I can't believe I got that. Oh, you know there's what? the overload card. That could be the uh, the the mark of, you know, Tice getting the card he needs to get revenge on those Kaka. I think the minions are bad enough that you actually towed him here. Total truck actually isn't anything. It's it's just, a, it might as well be a 1-1. One -one. It doesn't do anything in yeah, this scenario. Trash. I think if you hear a power, the, the the warrior might not clear it. You might get some presence on the board, and right. you can you can ancestral next turn, which you probably would anyway, because you can't do it on the turn after that. Right, next turn he doesn't. Oh well, yeah, that that makes a lot of sense. He has doom hammer. He wants to doom hammer on five. He wants to ancestral on three, so he can escape that overload. I get why he played his minions. Okay. My eyes. Farseer number one. By the way, he has Bash, Farseer. He has like three Farseers, basically. And Armor Smith. Smith. It's going to help. It's going to help a lot. At well, this point, there's almost no reason Tice can't survive the early game. It would really suck to have to use a Rock Biter here, but I think that's what we're about to see. Yeah. You know, realistically, it might be the case where Oskaka feels like the only way he can win is to build up a very imposing board presence. So he's just going to forego that and use Doomhammer the way, same way he did yet uh, last game, mm -hmm. where he was trying to establish board control and then push for two to three turns of a lot of damage. It hasn't worked out all that well so far. But uh, it has been some very close games. Another fiery war axe. How does he do it? You know, it feels like the dragon warrior was waiting for this kind of start all tournament long. This could be the first time that we've seen like this imposing of a start. Mm -hmm. Actually, I, I I take that back. We did see one time, Crip, where the start was this good, but dragon warrior lost anyways. It was against Druid. Yeah, that that sounds that uh, sounds about right. As good as uh, the draws are with uh, with the warrior potentially. They don't match up as well against Druid. The Fiery Waxes don't kill quite as many minions as they do against the Shaman. And um, I believe in that case, the Druid had some ramp, and it just outpaced the Warrior. Now, the Shaman is capable of outpacing the Warrior. It's just... Well, it, it, it has failed to do that, and we're four turns in. So this is a pretty rough spot to be in. Man, lava shocking. That is not ideal at all. That's the worst totem. It has one free armor. Yeah. Oh, two free armor. <laughs> well, I think you can take the time to initiate the uh, the Azure Drake. Even no. Least, oh, you're gonna actually go for it. You get it. two full health oh, armor smiths. Maybe. This is so hard to deal with that. How do you beat that? Is it's impossible. And we, we know Askaka doesn't have a Lamental Destruction, at least from what we've seen, but we've seen a lot of that. <laughs> Alright, when I see it actually uh, put out like, what, the board. What are you, you're going to kill both Armorsmiths? So the Warrior's at, like, what, 36 with a Bash and then a 2 Armor Hero Power? <laughs> it's like... You just that don't have enough damage. The, the Farseer is actually worth so much more health than 3 in this scenario. Yeah. You have no choice but to hit base. Yeah. Any minions that, that are played actually 
give a ridiculous amount of armor. Oh my god! <laughs> oh man, Tyus is about to uh, completely run away with this game. He's got tank up. I mean, at, at this point, he's gonna need like three doom hammers to get through everything. Because the, the only chance the, he has is the below negates the, the doom hammer damage. Not even. He has to face damage. every single turn, but I don't. I don't think he can win. <laughs> Locked out. You know, this was this wasn't an, a, a, a turn six kill by reducing your health to zero. It was a turn six kill by landing just a cartoon heart. <laughs> I mean, you can you can bash your own minion to gain five HP. <laughs> yeah, you could also. I mean, if you want, if you really want to be um. I would probably go for that line, but uh, I think I think Tice is probably a little bit uh, too mature for that. Mm -hmm. No, I just feel like uh, Oskaka right now is calculating the absolute best possible case with draws if he goes face, and um, it looks like he's realized he can't win if he goes face. That's why we're seeing some minion destruction here. Yeah, and he's gonna kill both armor smiths. Just kind of suck it up. So uh, the armor smiths gained. Just one eight health. So, oh, sorry, uh, five health so far for it. All right. Well, the Azure Drake drops any kind of dragon synergy, but um, armor up, boys. Tank up, in fact. Wow. Well, well there's the rock fighter. Hard. I mean, here's another thing, though. Like something to consider is that warriors not have many cards remaining, and it is very possible for them to just run dry, pick up other stuff that they can't play, um, and, and just... It's, it's almost, it feels like he was all in on the plan of being super defensive, but it does have one of the best defenses I've, set, I've seen in a while. All right, what are we looking for here? I think Paladin minions are pretty decent. Oh, we're looking for face, apparently. Oh, yeah, you just need to generate damage somehow. Some way somehow. You need to hunt your hero power to keep the tank up in check. You gonna kill the minions with this? Yep. Kill the the armor smith and the average drake, and really kind of get mileage out of hitting with minions re repeatedly. But it doesn't matter because he's got a uh, uh, bash shield slam. Oh no, dragon though. Hmm. That's this okay. Is a pretty good clear though. You play. You don't, you don't even have to tank up here. You can play the brand bronze beard. You can tank up also if you want to be really safe, but it, it, it's almost it's somewhat inconsequential in the in the big picture. I think Oskaka might be locked out. The other thing to consider is sometimes in this scenario, the shaman is capable of drawing like uh, a few extra pieces, but Oskaka has already played through all his card draw already. So Oskaka is also drawing just one card at a time from this point on in the game. Like, I just don't see how his draws are going to be significantly better than Tice's. And that warrior, I mean, by the time he can even possibly die, he's going to collectively have, what, like 50 health? <laughs> Something like that, if we, if we round down. <laughs> He plays Pharaoh Spirits. Uh, he, I mean, Pharaoh Spirits, and how you have to kill the Farseer to protect your Pharaoh Spirits. <laughs> okay, I think he has to kill both those minions. You'll be at four. Remember, warriors can't do four damage. <laughs> I can do three. Yeah. Uh, the bat, the spell power bash, it can, but it already use both bashes, I think. Yeah, I think you'll have to leave the, the Bran up. Yeah, pretty unfortunate. So let's kill the farce here, and I guess we'll go to work. No one said it was easy, Oskaka. Okay. A dragon will do it. And a dragon will wow. do it. Wow. There it is. Game number five goes to Tice, and the, the the repercussions of winning game number one in this in the way he did, uh, having the the druid steal one from the rogue was such a big deal. 
because now it ends up giving him the extra edge, and that's going to wrap up the series. Tice is our second finalist to face against the Beats for the right to call themselves the Cursed Trials champ. Well, one of the G2 members did it. Looks like their uh, hard work is uh, is paying off pretty well. Very good results from uh, from this lineup. Um, I did kind of bet on, on Tice, but I did bet against Warrior, and uh, somehow Warrior is barely barely pulling in some wins uh just in time to uh to seal up matches really cool uh really interesting to see two priest decks make it to the finals uh i don't think people were expecting to see that so <laughs> we're, we're gonna get ready for the grand finals guys between tice and savitz but uh, before we do that we're gonna take a break uh, we also want to give a thank you to the sponsors at geek fuel uh the cursed network to hearthpone as well as the innkeeper.com stuff. It's a, it's a my collection manager for those Hearthstone fans really wanting to keep up with the decks and make sure they keep tabs on uh, all their favorite meta stuff. But we're going to be right back, guys. It's time for the Grand Finals to see who calls themselves the first champion here uh, of the Cursed Trials presented by Team Archon. Stay tuned. 